Well, it's the 10th day of September 2019. And if it's Tuesday, guys, you know, it's strictly business. Good evening and welcome to Y254 channel today we are discussing matter housing kenyans and how affordable housing under the big four agenda is it achievable or not can it be better implemented and with me in studio i have amazing people who will be helping me put that into perspective karibuni guys karibuni <laughs> feel at home Sour, sour. We'll be getting back to them in a while, but first I want us to look at news making headlines. Remember, you can interact with us on our social media platform. That is Y254 channel. Cuts across all social media platforms. The hashtag to use on Twitter is Y254 updates. Or you can tweet me directly at Miriam underscore Masava. So let us take a look at our first news. Parliamentary convened its sitting today afternoon after a month-long recess. The lawmakers are expected to pass the Division of Revenue Bill 2019 following a breakthrough in talks over the settlement that had threatened to paralyze operation at the counties. Take a look. Relief for counties as Parliament prepares to dispense off with the Division of Revenue Bill this week. After weeks of statements, Senators yielded ground accepting 316 billion shillings as proposed by the National Assembly to go to counties. A mediation committee meeting set for Wednesday will ratify the agreement with counties expected to receive their allocations as early as next week. Parliament resumed sittings today afternoon with a full entry among them debate on the impending evictions in the Mao Forest. The breakthrough over the division of revenue bill may however do little to even before the dust settles the on the controversial the parliamentary power the issue of equity and regional balance propped up due all right moving on is equity group holding is set to expand in the domestic Democratic Republic of Congo as it, it, it acquires majority stake in Commercial Bank of Congo, an indication that the bank seeks to further consolidate its footprint in the Central African market. In a statement, the bank announced that it intends to merge the second largest bank in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Commercial Bank of Congo, with its current subsidiary in the DR Congo. Equity Chief Executive Officer James Mwangi said the move will help the bank further penetrate in the African market. Equity Group has been on a relatively aggressive regional expansion, have entered a preliminary agreement to buy out banks in Zambia, Mozambique, Tanzania and Rwanda in April 2019. In the period ending June 2019, the group's business in DRC posted the second fastest growth in net earnings. Equity Group entered the DRC market in 2015 through the acquisition of Pro Credit. The Competitions Authority has stopped Kenya Commercial Bank from firing National Bank of Kenya employees. This comes after the National Bank of Kenya and Commercial Bank of Kenya merger deal received the final approval from the Capital Markets Authority, paving way for the merger of the two banks. NBK Chief Wilfred Msau was the first casualty of the merger after his position was taken over by KCB's head of regional business Paul Russo following the fo following the accusation of NBK 1,356 workers are set to lose their jobs as KCB moves to streamline the activities of the two lenders. However, Competitions Authority has given the workers an 18 month lifeline saying it is in line with the global best practices. However, it is not clear what will happen to the various margins, managers of NBK who are in contract. NBK, which is a tier two lender, has a market share of 2.37%, while KCB controls 14% of the tier one segment of the market. Following the merger, the market share of KCB will stand at 16.51%, making it the largest bank in the region in market share and capitalization.
Well, here is some good news for potato farmers across the country. Nakur Governor Lee Kinyanjui has warned potato traders that they, are, they risk arrest for packaging Irish potatoes in extended bags that weigh more than 50 kilograms. This comes after pleas from farmers to standardize packaging so the Ministry of Agriculture published regulation in efforts to protect farmers from exploitation by traders. Kinyanjou says the Devolve unit is keen on implementing the new packaging regulations on farm produce. Transporters have also been put on notice that their motor vehicles would be impounded and owners arrested for ferrying Irish potatoes in packages weighing more than 50 kilograms. Potato is the second most consumed crop in the country after maize. About 8 million tons are produced in Kenya annually. Remember, this is business news. We bring you business news from the country, from the globe, and across the world. Now, moving on in, on to international business news is that Alibaba chairman and co-founder Jack Ma is expected to step down from the e-commerce on Tuesday, bringing an end of an era for the firm. Daniel Zhang, Alibaba's chief executive, will replace him as executive chairman. Details of these and other stories in our international business news roundup. The firm has become one of the world's biggest internet firms with the company being valued at $480 billion. The former English teacher co-founded Alibaba in 1999 and it has become one of the world's biggest internet firms. He oversaw the firm's growth into an international heavyweight and its listing in New York which set a record as the world's biggest public stock offering. Jack Ma will be replaced by Daniel Zhang, Alibaba's chief executive. The tech entrepreneur will remain on Alibaba's board of directors. Meanwhile, British Airways pilots are striking for a second day in an ongoing dispute over pay and conditions. Tens of thousands of passengers have been told not to go to airports, with the airline cancelling some 1,700 flights due to the disruption. The pilots' union said British Airways management's cost cuts and dumbing down of the brand had eroded confidence in the airline. The walkout is due to end at midnight, although there could be additional unexpected cancellations tomorrow. Both sides say they are willing to hold further talks, but no date has been set. The pilots are currently scheduled to stage another strike on the 27th of September. Finally, Volkswagen is picking up the pace in its bid to dominate the auto industry's electric future. The world's biggest car maker announced that it had struck a deal with Sweden's Northvolt to build a giant battery factory in Germany. The German company said production of lithium-ion batteries will begin in the late 2023 or early 2024, a move that will be vital to Volkswagen's ability to mount what it calls the largest electric offensive in the automotive industry worldwide. The group plans to launch almost 70 new electric models in the next decade and hopes to build 22 million electric cars over this period. It is investing in more than 30 billion pounds into electrifying its fleet over the next four years, prompted by, in part, pressure from regulators and the fallout from its scandal. If successful, Volkswagen could overtake rivals such as Tesla and BYD. Well, that's all we had for you here on Business News. That is our news making headline tonight. But remember, we have a serious discussion coming after after this break because we're going to discuss about housing Kenyans and how affordable housing, what, is, what exactly is affordable housing, you know? It can mean different things to different people. So I'll be discussing that with such an amazing panelist who have joined me tonight. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back after this.